In the video that you're about to see, I do a blood sugar test with a couple of good friends. The husband, Fred, is pre-diabetic and his wife, Linda, is in the normal range. And yet, even at that, there's going to be an amazing rise in the blood sugar after eating foods that most people wouldn't consider problematic. I think you'll find this little test eye-opening. Well, we are at the house of Fred and Linda Lindstrom. I've known Fred and Linda for years and years and years, and uh, Fred has been diagnosed as either being diabetic or pre-diabetic, and we're going to take a blood test. And the point we're going to attempt to establish is that what you eat makes a difference as to what your blood sugar levels are. Uh, Fred, I want to just ask you a couple of questions. How long has it been since you were diagnosed as uh, diabetic or pre-diabetic? Which one was it? Uh, pre-diabetic about 11 or 12 years ago. 11 or 12 years. How did you feel when the doctor told you that? Did, did it scare you or did you just take it in stride? I was, I was quite surprised and uh, a little scared. And do you have any of this in your family? Were you, expe you weren't expecting this, obviously. I was not. My, uh, I, feel, I learned later that my, my mother and my aunts, some of them had, had diabetes. Okay, so we've got Linda with us as well. Uh, Linda, you're kind of the unusual one here. You're normal. So, <laughs> but have you ever tested your blood sugar? I test it maybe once a month. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, in the morning, fasting blood sugar Always test? fasting. And what kind of numbers do you get? I get in the 80s, high well, 80s. Well, that's outstanding. Um, low 90s. Yeah, that is, that is outstanding. But you, you've never tested yourself after a meal, I, I imagine. I never have. Okay, no. so this is the first time for, for you, and Fred, you haven't done it much. Right. What we're going to do is we're going to, I bought some Whoppers for us. We're going to go in the kitchen. We're going to eat a Whopper. We're going to eat some chips because it was that very meal. It wasn't really a Whopper, but it was a hamburger the size of a Whopper. Uh, it was that very meal that I ate, and my blood sugar jumped up to about 185. And I knew that was too high, and it scared me. And it kind of got me thinking, and then I started experimenting with other, other meals, other foods, and uh, it kind of led me to the path where I am now, which is uh, watching very carefully what I put into my body. You ready to eat a Whopper? We're ready. <laughs> okay. We're ready. We're hungry. But before we ate our meal, we tested our blood sugar levels to find out what our starting points were. We all tested at decent levels. Linda scored an 88. Fred's blood sugar level was at a respectable 101. Mine was at 104, and just for fun, we tested our cameraman, a young man still in his 20s, and he tested at 82. Then we went into the kitchen and ate our Whoppers with a large helping of chips. The Whoppers were good, and the chips tasted pretty great as well, I have to admit. Normally, I wouldn't eat chips for anything in the world, but for this little experiment, I made an exception. The meal really filled us up, and Fred couldn't quite finish his burger although he got down most of it. We waited until we had all completely finished our meal and then noted the time. We had tested ourselves just prior to eating, and now we would wait until one hour after the last bite of the last person and then test ourselves again. We had some time on our hands, so we played a dice game called Farkle until the time came for us to test ourselves and find out what the Whoppers and Frito's corn chips had done to our blood sugar levels. Well, it's been almost exactly an hour since we ate those Whoppers and uh, finished eating our chips. Uh, we're now about ready to test ourselves. Uh, Fred, you had a hard time getting that whole Whopper in. You're not um, used to eating that much for lunch, are you? Right, about 95% <laughs> of it. Okay, so uh, we are eager to find out what happened. We actually tested our cameraman, who's a young fellow in his 20s, and he jumped up almost 60 points eating the Whopper and the chips. And that's a little scary for us older people because if he jumped up 60, uh, we just might be more than that. We'll see. Uh, Linda, do you have any idea what you're going to score? I think I'll go from uh, 88 to 120. That would be your guess. Five. 125. 125. Fred, what would you guess for yourself? 101 to 165. To 165, okay. We began to stick ourselves with our lancing devices and apply a drop of blood to the testing strips on the blood sugar monitor. 
We expected a rise, and there surely was. Linda's jumped from 88 to 159. Fred's blood sugar went from 101 to 174, and mine went from 104 to 150. The American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists has recommended that people with diabetes try to keep their blood sugars under 140 as much as possible. We'd all gone well above that following our meal of a large hamburger and corn chips. Now, if this was our normal way of eating, that is, constantly eating meals loaded with carbs, plus eating high-carb snacks here and there, the way many Americans eat, we would be at diabetic levels much of the day, doing severe damage to our bodies over the course of time. You've, I think, read at least portions of my books. Uh, what, do, what did you take from, from reading? Any, any particular lesson that you learned that was kind of eye-opening for you? Yes. Uh, my sister had been diabetic for many years, and I never understood the role that carbohydrates played okay. in a diabetic's life. I thought if she didn't eat desserts, right, donuts, yeah, that kind of thing, that she would be okay. And when I read your your first book, uh, I learned what carbohydrates do. Yeah. They just turn to sugar. So we're learning here that uh, we have to take responsibility for what we put in our mouth. And we have to set a limit and say, this is as far as it's going to go. And if I have to make some sacrifices, if I have to cut back some things, I'll do it. Uh, Fred, any last words? Uh, have, have you had an eye-opening moment today? <laughs> or is yes, it just... it's a, a little shocking. A little shocking. Mm -hmm. Okay. You haven't seen your blood sugar numbers that high normally. Never, never. Never. Never, never seen it. Because you normally test when? Fasting. Fasting. Fasting test mm -hmm. in the morning normally. Mm -hmm. Just to recap the tests we did, after eating the burger and chips, Fred's blood sugar rose from 101 to 174, which was a 72% increase. Linda's rose from 88 to 159, which was an 81% increase. And my blood sugar rose from 104 to 150, which would be a 44% rise. Now, here's something worth considering. None of us are true diabetics. Fred and I have hovered in the pre-diabetic range for years, and Linda wouldn't even qualify as a pre-diabetic. If this meal affected us this way, what do you suppose it would do to a real diabetic with a fasting blood sugar of, say, 140? Almost surely he or she would end up over 200 on the post-test. And keep in mind that few Americans would eat this meal the way we did. Most would have a soda with it, adding an additional 40 grams of carbohydrates, and some would want a dessert of some kind, adding more carbs still, and raising their blood sugar higher still. Keep in mind that what we ate was not sweet. We had not been eating candy, cake, ice cream, or pie. What was making our blood sugar rise were the buns on our hamburgers and the chips. These foods had been converted into sugar in our bodies and made a major impact upon our blood sugar levels. Wasn't that interesting? I find it fascinating that foods most people consider pretty innocuous could be so potent in raising blood sugar. In our next video post, I plan to share part two of this test where Fred, Linda, and I eat an entirely different meal and get very different results. One of the reasons that I do these tests is that it was through tests like these that I found the way out of my own blood sugar woes and got back to normal levels. I basically staved off the scourge of diabetes as I learned to strictly limit those foods which raise blood sugar and lean hard to the foods that do not. This video clip was taken from our series, Overcome Runaway Blood Sugar. You can order the series on DVDs or individual DVDs by going to our webpage, spiritofgrace.org diabetes. I hope you'll subscribe to our Beat Diabetes YouTube channel so that you'll be notified every time we post a new video. And if you like the video, be sure and give it a thumbs up so that YouTube will rank it higher in their search engine and more people will be able to see it. That's it for now. God bless and see you again soon.